Thank you to Albert for the introduction. Uh, I will present uh, um, work uh, about evaluation of external sulfate attack in concrete structures. We have a Rylan uh, TC about the external sulfate attack and sulfate resistant testing that we are finalizing more or less our work in this year and the next one. Well, uh, the presentation has two parts, two mainly parts. The first one is the analysis of field concrete uh, structure, the literature review about uh, field concrete structure affected by the external sulfate attack or sulfate attack in general. And we have uh, defined, uh, we, are, uh, we have analyzed a lot of cases and we have defined uh, different um, levels of damage and risk. Uh, and the second part is a study about uh, different uh, types of concrete in immersion and semi-immersion testing. And finally, the conclusion. Well, uh, with respect to the literature review, we have analyzed uh, more than uh, one, uh, 130 uh, structures of cases uh, uh, from different uh, countries, 25 countries around the world, um, related with the action of external sulfate attack in different circumstances. Well, the distribution uh, of the review, uh, this is not exactly related with the, with the real situation, but uh, these are the the cases reported and published in different uh, papers. Huh? This is the, the information, but sure that we have uh, some more cases that uh, has not been reported yet. Well, uh, many of the cases are reported in Europe, uh, less uh, in America, and Asia and Africa, more or less the same, and only one case in Oceania. With respect to the type of uh, structure affected by uh, external sulfate attack are reported in these papers, we have tunnels, uh, mainly tunnels in Europe and in America, uh, foundation, mainly in America and, U uh, and Europe, uh, sorry, uh, the tunnels is in Asia and America and Europe, and uh, pavements are mainly reported in uh, America, uh, in North America, United States and Canada. And also we have other different type of structure affected by external sulfate attack. Well, we have uh, analyzed the different parameters um, that we can report in the, in the papers. We can extract from the papers. We have analyzed them, and here only I want to show you, if he wants, <laughs> the Excel file. We have a lot of structure. We have analyzed a lot of parameters, different parameters, and we have classified this uh, information in different files uh, related with the structure. Well, with this information, a lot of information, uh, we have uh, defined um, a flow chart uh, regarding with, the, uh, with different factors. We have divided in four main groups, environmental, condition, material, type of structures, and type of degradation. And if is, uh, each of these uh, factors or main aspect have, uh, has been divided in different parameters that we have uh, analyzed and uh, defined a relative uh, weight of each of us. In environmental condition, we have defined the source of sulfates from soils, underground grotters, spray of salt, seawater aggregates, industrial weights, and other origins. And we have done, um, we have uh, give a, a relative weight to each of us, a relationship between them. And 
With respect to the origin of sulfate, we have defined gypsum or anhydride, sulfurs, alkaline sulfates, and other uh, type of sulfates. Uh, with the humidity condition, we have defined constant humidity, mostly wet, wet dry cycles, mostly dry. And with respect to the temperature, we have defined three uh, different uh, parameters uh, below 10 degrees centigrade. Uh, that is related with the thermosite formation, as uh, that have explained before. Uh, the medium temperature between 10 and 60 degrees centigrade at hot temperature higher than 60 degrees centigrade. Uh, with respect of the uh, materials, we have defined different uh, parameters that are uh, type of binder. Um, we have uh, separate cement resistant, sulfur resistant cement ordinary Portland cement, and other uh, cements that are mainly supplementary cementitious cements. With respect to the cement radio, uh, cement water, uh, water cement radio, sorry, uh, we have defined uh, three, uh, three um, uh, intervals uh, below 0.4, uh, between 0.4 to 0.6, and higher than 0.6. In each case, as I have mentioned before, we have established a relative weight of each parameter. Uh, with respect to the binder content, we have also defined three, three possibilities uh, below 260 kilograms per cubic meter, between 260 and 320, and higher than this uh, value. Uh, with respect to the aggregates, we have uh, divided in four possible aggregates, uh, that is calcareous aggregates, uh, due to the influence in the stomach formation, siliceous aggregates, a mix of siliceous and calcareous aggregates, or aggregates with pyrites or pyrotines due to the possible uh, forma uh, formation of um, uh, internal sulfate attack. And uh, with respect to the porosity or permeability, we have defined low permeability, medium, or high permeability. Um, respect to the type of structure, we have defined three main groups. Uh, the critical structure, that is only nuclear, and, uh, nuclear power plants and dams, due to the consequence of uh, fail of this type of structures, semi-critical structure that are more the most the, the structures uh, like tunnels, piers, uh, bridge, uh, etc. And uh, the no critical structure are those that can be replaced easily and uh, the fail is not um, very dramatic due to, because they uh, don't have a structural uh, properties well, or requirements. Uh, with all of these factors and the ponderation between them, we have defined a level of risk that consider each of uh, specific parameters, the relative weight of each specific parameter, and the summatory <coughs> of the three main uh, uh, group of factors. We have defined the, the um, relative weight in the manner that uh, the worst situation, uh, the, um, the adding of the worst situation in, if, in each parameter uh, is uh, 100. Huh? And uh, related with this, we have uh, defined four, uh, five, sorry, five uh, different levels uh, from uh, less than 40 until uh, higher than 80, 85 percent. It's not percent, it's an um, uh, arbitrary unit. It's a relative uh, weight of each parameter. With respect to the consequence of degradation of the 
alteration in the concrete structure, we have defined five uh, groups of uh, factors that, has, uh, that are uh, time of appearance, less than one year, uh, between, until 15 years or more than this, long-term degradation, a speed of degradation, a slow, medium, or quick, uh, depth of alteration in the concrete superficial, less than one centimeter, uh, medium until seven centimeters of uh, higher than seven centimeters that is considered massive. If the, um, the, the concrete is thinner and is affected all the, all the, um, the, the depth, uh, we consider the massive attack. Um, with respect to the type of degradation, we have the uh, separate in groups uh, cracking, spalling, swelling, combination with other action like corrosion or, the, uh, or other possibilities. And with respect to the product form format, we have defined uh, different groups, etingite, gypsum, etingite plus gypsum, thomasite, and others. And also, with respect to uh, these specific parameters, as uh, Dan Hutton has mentioned before, and we can see later in my presentation, um, there are not a direct relationship between the product form and the deterioration of damage of a structure. This is uh, very well known at this moment, and the relative uh, weight of this parameter is now too high. Well, in the same, uh, with the same philosophy than the, f the previous classification, we have defined the level of damage as a summatory of the different uh, factors considered. And we have, we have um, obtained the level of damage uh, assigned the, the um, relative weight until 100 in the worst situation in each of uh, uh, parameter analysis. Well, to verify um, the classification that we are we are proposing, we are still working analyzing this this uh, uh, this um, information. We have uh, contrast the potential risk, the level of, of risk that we can define with the information in the different structure analysis we respect with the level of damage. And um, in uh, 59 st structure that have uh, more, of the, more of the factor defined in, in their information. And we can uh, check the, the, the relationship between, that is uh, quite, um, is a little, is a, is a good correlation, uh, but we are improving this, uh, this relation, uh, this uh, analysis to, to improve this correlation. But in general, we have a very good correlation between the uh, theoretical risk and the real damage observed in the, in the structure. Well, we uh, have applied this uh, experience or this proposal of level of risk and uh, level of damage in a study that we have done in different countries. I will spray, explain first the, the study that we have done uh, in our institute um, that uh, is, uh, is related with the concrete that has been used in, uh, in, the concrete, in, in railroad overpass uh, in contact with soil that have sulfate, uh, calcium sulfate and can be uh, exposed to uh, dry wet cycles due to the rain and so on, and uh, underground water. water. Uh, and this um, study uh, consists in two the, um, parts of the test, one in immersion, another one in semi-immersion exposure. Uh, the characteristic of the, of the concrete study, we have studied 63 mixes of uh, real concrete with uh, four types of cements, mainly type one, 
All of them are defined or are uh, um, uh, sulfur resistant cement and uh, some of them with uh, slugs. Uh, the coarse aggregates are mainly calcareous uh, but we, or limestone uh, aggregates, but also we have siliceous <coughs> aggregates and uh, less quantity of dolomites. And we have different classes of uh, straight case, classes. Well, uh, also we have defined the water cement radio. As you can see, we, we are defined the same parameters that we have previously analyzed uh, in the literature review. We have analyzed the water cement ratio between 0.33 until 0.58 the uh, <coughs> aggregate cement ratio, uh, the content of cement between uh, two, uh, 2000, uh, 200, <coughs> sorry, 250 until uh, two, uh, 500 uh, kilograms per cubic meter. We have a family of concrete and we, we can analyze the different factors of uh, them. And we have take, um, a course from the, 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 um, the specimens uh, with a dimension of uh, eight, uh, eight centimeters in diameter and 28 uh, in, in longitudinal uh, measurement. Uh, we have protests, we have put um, gauge, gauge in uh, steel, steel, uh, steel gauges in the streams of the, of the course, and we have protests with uh, epoxy resin to avoid the, the remove of these, uh, of these steel uh, gauges during the, during the test. Well, we have considered that uh, the, the um, sulfur attack is not only a problem of chemical reaction. This, is, uh, this occurs in the inside of the concrete uh, with formation of gypsum, nitrogenite, and other sulfur. But also, there are a part that, in general, in the laboratory test, is not uh, very well considered that is the crystallization of salt. This is an important issue, issue that we can take into account when we will to, to analyze the behavior of, uh, of the concrete exposed to the natural environment. And we have combined two tests. The first part of the test is one year in aggressive solution of uh, sulfate, sodium sulfate and cal another in calcium sulfate. Um, the solubility of sulfate in this case is higher and uh, this is the reason why we have uh, used both. And uh, later we have um, tests uh, during three years, three and a half years in semi-immersion with the same aggressive solution. In the first part of the, of the test, we have um, procuring to, to spot the, the um, course uh, to the um, action of the sulfate uh, solution. We have cured during uh, two, uh, two, uh, 21 days in cured water at uh, 20 degrees centigrade. And later we have uh, put inside of solution with sodium sulfate or calcium sulfate. And we have replaced the solution uh, after 28 days, three months, and six months to avoid the variation of pH of the solution. And we have a measurement, the expansion, and the variation of weight. <laughs> In the second part of the, of the study, we have exposed uh, the, ses, the set of um, three specimens of each uh, concrete in each uh, sodium, so, or sodium solution or calcium solution in a uh, semi-immersion test, uh, protect to the rain at um, 
temperature are natural exposition to the moderate climate that can vary during the year between around oh sorry sorry <laughs> around uh, uh, two uh, two degrees centigrade below zero until around uh, 37 degrees uh, centigrade and uh, temperature and relative humidity that vary with these uh, temperatures also. As you can see here, uh, part of the specimen are inside of sun and, and, and aggressive solution. Some part is exposed only to the solution <coughs> and exposed to the wet uh, dry cycles and one part is exposed to the uh, aerial um, exposition. At the end of the year exposed in the inside of the um, aggressive solution, we can find no significant differences between uh, both uh, type of solution and uh, any of uh, and, and there aren't any any concrete that uh, have an expansion upper the limit of the ACTM uh, standard. We have analyzed the relationship uh, in the the um, expansion with respect to the type of cement uh, in each uh, solution, and we don't have. Mm, uh, evidence of the uh, difference between them. Also, we have not found evidence of um, relation uh, of differences between the expansion and type of aggregates or expansion uh, versus concrete. All these results are the are uh, related with the period in which the samples here are inside of the, of the aggressive solution, not exposed to the environmental or semi-immersion conditions. But uh, we have uh, started the second part of the, of the semi-immersion test. Well, it's not exactly a test, it's a study because it's not possible to define a test that need for uh, four and a half years to, to, to consider the durability of concrete. Um, after one year, we can um, start to see some that some core have a deposit and the levitation in the surface, on the surface of the concrete. And after three uh, and a half years of semi-immersion, uh, we have uh, around 20% uh, of concrete that have different type of alteration. Uh, we have defined, it's a little bit similar than the presentation of that. Ah, yes, sorry. Uh, we have defined different uh, types of damage. They are much, uh, most of the concrete don't show any, any alteration. The concrete that have uh, steel fibers shown concentration of stress and, uh, and cracks around the fibers uh, inside the concrete. We have other group that show uh, formation of cracks, you can see here, with uh, filling with uh, white products. Also, uh, we have um, a course with delamination and uh, partial loss of materials in the aerial <coughs> part of the course. And also we have some, uh, some uh, concrete with uh, very big uh, damage and uh, alteration extend to the total of the concrete. Uh, here we can see the examples of uh, different uh, different type of uh, of uh, situation. Not um, concrete, not altered, but with some deposit, but without alteration. Uh, deposit and cracks, uh, mainly in the interface uh, of the paste with the aggregates. Some. Uh, loss of, uh, of pace or uh, material and alteration in the surface, on the surface, and um, um, very, very alterated concrete. It's only 3.3% uh, uh, of the concrete. 
All of them, I remember that I remind you that all of them has been uh, manufactured with sulfur resistant cement. Uh, here we have a clear influence of the crystallization of salt uh, process that is uh, quite different than only the, the chemical attack. We have not find difference with, uh, we have test the, the, uh, the um, a concrete uh, inside the solution, completely immersed, but we have a very different behavior when we have some immersion exposition. Well, we have defined uh, three areas that I have mentioned before. The uh, um, part of the core that is inside sun and sulfate uh, solution, the part in, in contact with sulfate solution at uh, exposed uh, to the white uh, dry wet dry cycles and the upper part exposed to the to the air in contact with the air we have analyzed the formation uh, well uh, here i cannot say that we have analyzed the concrete inside of the course and on the surface of the course we have analyzed the formation in the surface, uh, the products formed in the surface that is mainly gypsum in the upper part of the samples and thaumacite, uh, tringite uh, in, in the interior, uh, sorry, in the, in the parts in contact with uh, sulfate solution or uh, immersed in sand and sodium solution and sulfate solution. Uh, on the other hand, in the interior of the concrete, we have find thaumacite or an ettringite or, or ettringite in the three areas defined in the concrete. But there are not a clear relationship between the ettringite or thaumacite formation and the degree of damage that we have observed except in the very alterated concrete that in this case we have a much more uh, a tringite or thaumacite. But we are not uh, fine, uh, we have not find uh, a clear relationship in the submerged or intermediate areas of the concrete. At microstructural level, we have analyzed the different uh, situation of the different uh, damage in the concrete in non alterated concrete, we can find also in the microstructure and also by X-ray diffraction, crystallization of ettringite or thaumacite inside of the concrete, by, but without formation of cracking. Uh, this is a very accepted uh, issue that uh, not only the presence of uh, ettringite or thaumacite means that we have a, a sulfate attack because uh, if this product can be formed inside the paste without uh, cracking, without the generating of cracking, you cannot, uh, do, you have no problems with this type of concrete until uh, maybe some years before. Uh, in the in the um, <coughs> upper part of the um, concrete that show the lamination, we have uh, find mainly in the area part a gypsum and calcium uh, uh, calcium carbonate on the surface, and inside we can uh, find ettringite or thaumacite in pores and interface. Uh, uh, um, aggregate uh, paste interfaces, but without uh, much more cracking. Uh, with respect to the to the samples that have um, uh, more alteration, we can find uh, cracks and delamination, and uh, in the at microstructural level, we can uh, see. Uh, crystallization of ettringite or, or thaumacite and gypsum uh, uh, form cracking and filling the cracking. And uh, in interface, uh, here we can see thaumacite, here we can see ettringite. 
Well, also we have uh, defined the dip of, uh, of the alteration and um, uh, in the case of sodium sulfate is a little bit higher than uh, the dip of alteration in case of calcium sulfate solution. This is related with the concentration of sulfate. Well, we have applied the previous, <laughs> if you remember the first part of the presentation, we have applied uh, the, oh, obviously the environmental condition in this case is similar for all the uh, concrete, but uh, we have different uh, material, if you rem remember, we have different uh, porosity, uh, water cement ratio, uh, the type of cement is always sulfur resistant cement, and we have uh, applied the this uh, methodology to the strengths of the of the characteristics of concrete, and we can at this moment find a very good correlation between uh, both uh, strengths of situation, depending on the of the characteristics of materials mainly, because the uh, the exposition is similar in all the cases. Well. Going to the um, conclusions, we see that the analysis of field structure cases, a lot of uh, uh, cases reported at international level, we can define, define a, level, a level of risk based mainly in three uh, groups of parameters. Environmental condition, oh, I lost my, <laughs> environmental condition, characteristics of materials, and type and criticity of the structures. And also we can define a level of damage based on the five different parameters uh, that are related with the alteration in the concrete. Uh, the correlation, we have found that the correlation between theoretical damage and damage produced in the, in the concrete structures um, is uh, good at this moment, uh, but we, we will improve this classification. And finally, uh, with respect to the sulfur resistant testing for concrete, um, we need to take into account the environmental condition, mainly the wet dry cycles that it more aggressive than other, other environments due to the crystallization of salt. Uh, we need to, to improve our standards or our methodology uh, to take into account this possibility because it's not only a problem of chemical reaction. And this is all. Thank you.